This is the first lesson in chapter four, which deals with equations and their graphs. We are only going to be looking at sections 4.3, 4.4, and 4.5 from this chapter. And we're gonna start off today with uh, section 4.3, which is deals with straight lines. And before we get too far, we need to talk about what we're actually dealing with. And what we are talking about here is sometimes referred to analytic geometry. And I'm sure you've heard these two words separate before, but when you hear them together, they mean something specific. Analytic geometry is applying algebraic equations to geometric shapes. And the first type of analytic geometry that we're going to deal with here is the slope of a line. You'll get to a lot more analytic geometry in your later courses as well, especially when you get into Tech Math 4. So just to start off, the slope of a line, and hopefully you've seen this before along the way, if you have a straight diagonal line or, um, or a horizontal line, uh, you can find any two points on this line and you can find the coordinates that correspond. So this first point here we're gonna call x1, y1. It has those coordinates. And the second point here is going to be at the coordinates x2, y2. And if we wanna find the slope between these two points, which is essentially how much this thing increases or decreases, then we are going to use the following formula. And we use the letter m for slope but essentially what we're doing is we're finding, uh, you've probably heard this before, the rise over the run. We're trying to figure out how much this thing rises for every increment that it uh, goes along the x-axis. So in this case, the rise would be the change in y. So this would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to use one other set of notation, which if you go on to calculus, you'll see a little bit later. And this is just essentially simplifying this to say we want to find the change in y over the change in x. And again, this little triangle here is a delta. It means change. So this is the change in y divided by the change in x. Now we wanna try a few examples of finding the slope of a line. So this first example I'm gonna work with you and then I'm going to ask you to do the next example. So if we wanna find the slope passing through two points, again, these ordered pairs are always listed in X and Y, so we'll call this X1, Y1, and this X2, Y2. So if we want to find the slope of this point, we are gonna follow this formula, Y2, which is one, minus y1, which is two, divided by x2, which is three, minus x1, which is four. And so if we do this, one minus two is negative one, and three minus four is negative one, negative one divided by negative one, we always wanna reduce this fraction if possible, is just gonna give us a slope of one. So for every unit we increase um, on the y-axis, we increase one unit on the x-axis, or there's one unit of rise for every unit of run. So I want you to pause the video at this point and try example two, and then resume the video to see if you've got the correct answer. So for this example, you should have ended up with a slope of negative seven elevenths, and this means that for every seven units, we actually go down because this is negative we are going to go across in the uh, x direction by 11 units. Another thing to discuss real quickly with regards to slope is how we can talk about these positive and negative slopes like we see in these previous examples. If we have a line that is increasing from left to right, then we know that the slope is positive. 
And we can write this as saying that m is greater than zero because our number m is greater than zero. Uh, if we have this slope here, this might actually be a slope of one. It's about a 45 degree angle. If we get a shallower angle, this is going to be a smaller number, maybe something like m is one fourth because we're only rising one for every four that we run. Likewise, if we get a steeper slope, we might end up with something like m equals two. We're arising two for every one that we run. So this brings us to the point is what happens if we get to the point where this line is completely vertical. If this line is completely vertical, we have no run in this case. So in this case, m is undefined. And again, this is because if m is equal to rise over run, and in this case your rise is technically infinite and your run is zero, anything that's divided by zero is undefined. Now this doesn't mean there is no slope. There is a slope, it's just that the slope is undefined. Likewise, if we look at this n equals one fourth and we start to flatten out to the point that we have a horizontal curve, well again, if we look at n being rise over run, then in this case, your rise is zero and your run is infinite. And we can take zero divided by any number, which just comes out to be zero. So in this case, we have a slope of zero. So again, this is for a vertical line. We have an undefined slope. And for a horizontal line, we have a slope of zero. Again, there is a slope. It's just that its value is zero. So our last case is what happens if this thing is decreasing from left to right. And as you may have guessed, this is going to give us a slope that is negative. And again, this might be something like n equals negative one if it's at a 45 degree angle. If it's at a shallow angle, then it might be something like n equals negative one third. And if it is at a steep angle, then it might be something like n equals negative two. So that's just kind of a brief introduction of slope. I'm gonna conclude this video now and you can pick up with the next video for this section.